Hello, you speakers. I'm Katza. And I'm George. And I'm Javier. So to be a good English speaker, we're going to start off you off with a good joke today. Katza, do you know why birds fly south for the winter? I don't know, Javier, why birds uh, fly south for the winter. Do you, George, do you know why birds fly south for the winter? I have no idea why birds fly south for the winter. Uh, because it's too far to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Dude. It was good. Come on. It was good. It That's a good, good dad joke, everybody. That's a good dad joke. I'm a dad. Yes. Of course, it's a yeah. dad it's joke. too far to walk. <laughs> it's too far to walk. That's why they fly to them. Yeah. Okay, so... Semantics <laughs> and pragmatics. We'll t- if you're an English, te- yeah. if you're an English teacher, you should know this. Thank oh, you. Yes, All right. This actually shows lots of fluency, guys. <laughs> <laughs> to be a fluent English speaker is for sure most <clears throat> learners' goal, right? But right. I don't believe we can actually grasp exactly what it sounds like to be fluent. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think this is a this is going to be a great a great episode because we're going to clarify, uh, you know, what fluency really is, mm-hmm. right? For all of you out there, and who are worried that if you're fluent, you're not fluent, and if you're not, well, we'll give you some, uh, you know, tips so you can be really fluent. Start start working on it. Yep, <laughs> I got I got to admit, guys, uh, I'll give, let you know a little secret, okay. Before, a long time ago, when I was actually looking for jobs, <laughs> if I could speak faster than the guy that was interviewing me, I know I would get the job. Because people think that speaking really fast is fluency. That's right. Yeah. So exactly. I always got the job. <laughs> but today, <laughs> we're going to debunk that. Yes. So fluency debunked. So stay tuned. Today, stay tuned. you're learning what exactly is to be fluent in English. Welcome to another episode of the You Speak English podcast. Thank you for hitting that play button and subscribing to our podcast channel. Remember, you can download the script for this podcast to, uh, to the link down in the description box. So uh, we're talking about most common, you know, advancements uh, learners always make. Yeah. All, right? All right. So I'll start with this part. And there's one that, you know, this is an interesting one because it's not only... Uh, advanced learners, even native speakers get sometimes <laughs> mixed up with this one. And this is people and persons. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And then sometimes, you know, they say, and they, 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 then they repeat when they say, oh, people, no, persons, no. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? They get made up their <laughs> Isn't it tricky, right? Yeah, it is tricky. Okay. It is tricky. It is to tricky. Try. Yeah. You know what it is? Is that it's the, it's the right way and there's the way people say it. And that's we kind of that caught on to yeah. the fact that everybody's using it wrong. Yeah, and, and and it's it's got its history behind this. Okay, uh, yeah. yes. over the over the last you know centuries, there have been different schools of thought over the usage of these two words. Okay, uh, but nowadays the most common and accepted word you know for the plural form of person is people. That's right. So person is one, people is plural. And you might, and then some people might argue, but I see in the dictionary that the word persons exist. It's there, persons. Yeah, it is. Uh huh. It, it is. is there. You look is for it. it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, persons is uh, uh, acceptable as a uh-huh. plural form, but in very specific context. For example, right. legal terminology. When uh-huh. people are when there there's a contract being written, they use the terminology the terminology or the word persons. Right. right. But Guys, everybody out there, if you're talking about uh, you know, the plural form of person, people right now is the most common. Even if you count them, you know, because sometimes they say, because then some people, but if you're talking about a group of seven persons, no, seven <laughs> people, it's very, it's very, it's very common. Yeah. And, I, and I heard, I've had these in mm-hmm. uh, in conversation clubs, in yeah. classes of advanced students where there's this, the, when they get to get to the word person and people or persons, there's always this thought. This this thought of or, oh, I'm not sure if I'm using it the right way. Is it people or persons or uh-huh. people? So debunk, not debunk, but clarified people plural <laughs> form. Don't um, don't 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 you know don't uh, worry too much about that. I have oh, a question. It. Yes, I have a question. I have a question. Mm. So what is, what would be correct? Because this is some this is a mistake uh, advanced learners usually make. Mm-hmm. What would be correct? You know how people are, or you know how people is. 
Well, you, we just said that people uh, is plural, so it has to yeah. be. It people has to are. be. A, yeah. It's a collect. It's a collective it's noun. A collective exactly. Noun. So we call it collective exactly. noun. Okay. So, people are people. Are people. Yeah, you know how people are. But you know, guys, I learned English a lot with music. So I remember the Pesh Mode had people are oh, people. So why song. should it be? But Lovely. Sly and the Family Stone, if you like classic uh, rock and funk, they had a song called I'm am Everyday People. Mm-hmm. But they were referring to the, the a, a racist, a racial aspect of people. So it's kind of yeah. hard if you picked up English with music. It is kind of hard to collocate appropriately. You know, if it's Correct. people, is people are. Yeah. All right. All right. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's another one. Mm. Uh, it's uh, when you know when students or learners, in this case, are asking questions in the simple past form. Uh, I don't know if you come across this they would construct a question in the following way in the following manner for example to say where did he went oh yeah <laughs> where did yeah, he yeah. went yeah. so they, they forget that when you're asking this uh, question in the past the verb goes back to its original form okay mm-hmm. to That's, its original form so right. you wouldn't you would not say where did he went you would say where did he go where did he go all right where did he go so, uh, yeah so this is a little bit about you know even if even if they're being fluent that means uh-huh. if they're being uh, speaking, you know, a, a little bit more, you know, without hesitations. Mm-hmm. Sometimes these things, you know, uh, they 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 make these mis- these uh, minor mistakes, but at the same time, important because it is still part of being fluent. Fluent. Yeah. All yes. right. Using proper grammar is part of being fluent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. that was number two for me. Okay. So anyway. In my case, in my case, guys, it's. Once again, an example of what we call L1 interference. It means people, if your first language is English, Spanish, you're still thinking in Spanish. Uh, mm-hmm. The one that I can first recall is make a question. Can I make oh, a question? That's right. you we don't make questions. We ask questions. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Yes. Also, we don't make a decision. We take a decision. This isn't the other way around. No, we no. make a decision. We don't no, take no. a decision. Oh, that's right. I, mean, I wrote it backwards. Uh, we don't listen to my examples. We listen to them backwards. <laughs> you don't take a decision. We make a decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know that. Okay. Uh, but you know what I'm that, referring that's to. That's <laughs> so close to Spanish. It just it sounds is. good. You know, it sounds good to you. Mm-hmm. And technically, if you say it wrong, I kind of still understand what you're saying. Yeah. So those are the dangerous ones, guys. The ones that that sound the ones understandable. False yeah. Yeah, yeah, false cognate or L one interference or a negative transfer. Sometimes we might call it. Those are the ones that that tend to hang on until you're more advanced and nobody corrected you, nobody told yeah. you, or you didn't pick up on it. Now it's your job mm-hmm. to pick up on it. Yeah, it's a it's All a hard right. job. It's you, hard work. What do you got? What do you got, have... what do you got, be, what do you got uh, under your sleeve? There? I have one. Okay. Saying I'm in the hospital when I'm actually taking care of someone or just visiting. Mm. So to say I'm in the hospital really means that you are being treated for something, right? Mm. So if you're just just visiting Uh someone, you are at the hospital and you really have to be clear on this. Mm. So it's not like we can interpret. It's actually essential because of context. Exactly. So... Yeah. yeah, if you are visiting someone, you are at the hospital. Yeah, careful yeah. with that. Don't want to scare your don't want to scare your friends. Yeah, don't want to scare anyone <laughs> or your boss. I'm in the hospital. Uh, oh my god, what happened to you? <laughs> are you not coming in today? <laughs> Context is everything. Context, Context is, everything. is everything. Yeah. Okay, guys. Okay. And going on to our beloved sections of cosas en español que no tenemos en inglés. We don't. We don't have that, right? <laughs> George, give us one. All right. Okay. Monday? George, give us one. <laughs> well, you didn't hear me? <laughs> I love Monday. That's a good that's, is that yes. your example? Monday. <laughs> Monday. Right. Monday. Oh Monday. Monday. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, Monday is it's used in in instead of que. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Mm-hmm. The response Como, to someone who says you know, like you know, saying your name, it's it's uh-huh. used to show politeness. Uh-huh. Yes. It, it's the equivalent in English, the closest it could get is saying yes. So if I say, mm-hmm. if you call my name, say uh, Javier. Uh, yes. 
No, you know, you call. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Monday? Or should I say Monday? No, sorry. Uh, hey, George, George. Uh, try again. Okay, George. Monday? It's like, <laughs> so I would it sounds like Monday. Mon- <laughs> it sounds like it sounds Monday. Monday, but it's Monday. Monday. No, George. Monday. It's, Monday. it's, 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 it's if I, if just if I were saying it, uh, yes. Yes. Uh-huh. That's right. Yes. It does have its uh, negative uh, origins of Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it does it have back to slavery. Mm-hmm. Right? Back to me- Mexican slavery. Yeah. Yeah, yes. back to Mexican slavery. You know, they, wow. they were. Wow. You're right. Uh, they were forced to call their masters <laughs> in Monday, Monday mm-hmm. instead, yeah. because they were the masters. But mm-hmm. now it has a different connotation. You know, it's it's uh, it, it is really to show you're being polite. Or, you're being uh, polite. Yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah, because it is really, really rude to say yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like say if I say cats and cats says what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's rude. No, that would be kind of rude. rude. That's I mean, really rude. Uh, what? What do you what want you, now? What, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? Exactly. What is it now? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, Katza, right, how about you? One. You got any? I have one okay. about feelings, you know? Oh. How in Spanish we tend to say I love you so uh-huh. easily because for because we're very warm, you know, warm-hearted. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, in English there is no te quiero. What there is te quiero? No mean? te what quiero. Is... Aha, uh-huh, uh-huh. exactly. So the closest or the direct translation would be I want you. Whoa, but, that's uh... but that <laughs> that goes with another tone. So <laughs> if you really are interested in knowing what I want you means, just look it up on the internet. We're not gonna explain it to you. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is don't a, say a, I want you to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but there is well, no te quiero. There uh-huh. is no te quiero. And essentially, you know, it's common to experience several stages in relationships. Uh-huh. So when we experience love, it is essential to know exactly when to say "I love you," right? The in, big L in, word. In, yeah, the big L word uh-huh. in English uh, cultures. But at any stage before real love, there is no expression in English that can cover the level of love, right? In English, we are in in, in, the, in, in English culture. We would say. Uh, something like I care about for, you, or I care well, that's before about love, you no. a lot, <laughs> right? But if I care about you, it doesn't mean that I that that's I, before that I, love. That be, that's before relationship. Way before yeah. love. Yeah, exactly. That's way before love. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, so that's why they actually Americans call it the the big L word. Because it's hard to L say. Word because it's. Huh. Hard to say. Uh-huh. It, L- implies... <laughs> yeah. it, it implies <laughs> lots of commitment. Uh, you uh-huh. know, wanting to be with in a an exclusive relationship. You know how the dating uh-huh. culture right, right, with yeah. them uh-huh. is different than us. Right. Uh-huh. So there is no the I think that uh, uh-huh. it comes to, it comes into the fact that we use in English we use love loosely, don't we? Because I love pizza. And uh, yes. I don't care about pizza. I love pizza. <laughs> There's pizza well, there are only two levels, aren't there? Aren't, aren't there? You pretty For much example, don't care I about like you. Yeah, I just hope pizza like loves you. me. That's pizza like loves you. me. I love pizza yeah. and pizza loves me. Okay, put it that way. Uh-huh. It stays yeah. in my body. We're, okay, we're part of say. each other's lives. <laughs> exactly. It stays with me. Yeah. All around. <laughs> That's right. How about okay. you? You have one? Okay, I, I heard this one this week. You know, because uh, my girlfriend was uh, talking about my food, and I take a long time to eat because I'm doing something else. And then she said that my dish was mosqueado. Oh, mosqueado. you left it we sitting don't ha- there. I left it sitting forever. there, and then flies had gotten to it. You. And probably it's not healthy <laughs> to eat it. So she said, no, it's probably. Stop- <laughs> so <laughs> probably. It's been sitting there for probably. a long time, right? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> scientifically accurate. It's not healthy. We're guys, Katza, you know. <laughs> Uh, there we have broader <laughs> limits and <laughs> limitations in terms of health issues. Okay, no. <laughs> so Moscato, we don't have that. I thought, like, what is that? Yeah, and, yeah. And well, and, I think the closest would be it's been sitting there for ages, right? Yeah, but it it implies that flies had gotten to it mm-hmm. and have been flying around it or sitting on it. So you might not want. You might want, might want to get rid of it, you know, throw it away. I want to keep away from that. I want right? to keep, yeah, you don't want to yeah. use that because mm-hmm. flies have been on it. So we don't actually have a one word for no. that. One. Okay, no, look. we don't. And one of my favorite ones is how we use the word in Spanish, luego, which means later. 
But if we use it back to back, in luego, luego, doesn't mean later, later. It means <laughs> no. right it now. It means the opposite. It means right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> right luego, away. luego. That means right away. Right away. We don't have. <laughs> it's like saying, like when you say pretty, like it's it's pretty hot in here. That means very. It's very hot. Mm -hmm. But we don't say she's pretty, pretty. No. Uh, no. no <laughs> Just <we don't>. sounds wrong. <laughs> So we don't have that's that in English. Horrible. She's pretty, pretty. She's pretty, no. pretty. Not very pretty. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> Can I say All pretty, right. pretty, please? <laughs> yeah, pretty, please. Okay, pretty, pretty please. That means very pleased. No, very wait a minute. Pleased. Okay, how about <laughs> exactly. you, Katza? Uh, yeah, no, I've given my example. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah. on to the next topic. <laughs> on to the next topic. So we're going for the main topic, oh. guys. I would like us to show what exactly fluency sounds like and we've been showing our audience every time we record a podcast this is fluency guys right we're okay, not that's watering exactly down. how we sound no exactly thank you we're i want to highlight that that there are many times that uh, we all i mean i did as a young teacher i watered down my english so that my students would understand me and i'm i'm, I'm giving them a very big disservice yes. you're not helping them you know speak normal as much as you speak can normal as you yeah this is the way we we're talking to each other right now is the way we normally speak, guys. This, yeah. This so, is so for our audience, Javier just used a very interesting word, watered down, means yes. to mm. filter it to make it sound easier for mm. lower levels. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Right. Yes, exactly. The okay. hard part is that we don't know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and we and I I've, I've actually seen teachers teach in upper intermediate and they they sound completely unnatural because yeah. they're they're water they keep watering down their English. So that you know that student feels good about his English. Like, oh, I understand my teacher, and he's a, um, a native speaker. You know, he's probably American. It's well, I understand mm -hmm. him. That's probably everybody else. So yeah. there's a difference <laughs> between the gym and a street fight. Okay, exactly, exactly. So uh, besides all the pointers that Javier and George and all their expertise uh, have for for you guys. I would like to um, mention, and, and this is very, this is a very important issue that we need to address, and it's that there is a psychological state for fluency. Okay, there is a psychological connection to the language. Okay, because you have to really experience it in your body, in your mind, in your. You don't. I mean, my hands are not sweating. I'm not thinking what I'm about to say. I'm not thinking about anything i'm just rolling right uh -huh. so the psychological state of fluency is to speak confidently naturally comfortably uh -huh. and easily that means words come to you and just come right okay. and you hardly ever make mistakes it's not like you have to be perfect but you hardly ever make mistakes and this is the the psychological mindset this is Besides practicing your listening or mm -hmm. your speaking or doing grammar exercises or reading a lot, you have to work on your psychological state towards using the language, right? Right, right. Totally. All it's right, all George. about your mindset. Your yeah, mindset. exactly. It's about mindset. Okay, George, so, let's go with, uh, let's, go, let's start it. Let's get started. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, uh, there, are, there are different factors of what fluency is. And I mean... Uh, Casa, you mentioned one of the most important ones is how your perception is and what your expectations are. I think the expectations of fluency, me, you know, is expectations and the real and the real definition of what fluency is. Expectations uh, is that you know you're you're speaking as is you're speaking your own language, your native language. In this case, for most of our listeners, is Spanish, right? So those are the expectations, but. Uh, there is also the 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 link you know the uh, linguistic uh, uh, approach or point of view or the uh, definition of what uh, being fluent is. Okay, right. It's it's uh, the measurements. Okay, they're fairly they're they're uh, basically two measurements. Okay, one of them is the rate of speech. Okay, how how uh, the rate of speech? How many syllables can you produce on a, in in a given time? All right. So how much how, how many words can you say, you know, precisely with its natural you know, with, with its natural utterances and mistakes? It doesn't mean that you have to speak extremely fast, 
but you got to be careful here. It doesn't also, it doesn't mean that you can speak very slowly. All right. So it's just speaking naturally. You mentioned this. Okay. And uh, Javier, you got the second one? Or we want to say I got the, the second one. I got, no, I got, got the, the second, second one. one. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I want to add to that, uh, guys. Uh, this, you guys, there's a tip for you right here and a little challenge. Um, this is actually a tip that we use in TOEFL IBT when we teach it. And try to answer a question in a minute. Clock yourself for one minute mm -hmm. and then uh, transcribe what you answered in one minute. And if you actually count the words and you answer it with less than 120 words, then you're too slow. Too slow. You, sh you should be able to produce more words for an answer in, in that given time as a frame. So I, a lot of times it's because we hesitate a lot We uh, 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 and the time keeps going. So that's one actual uh, uh, rate of speech hack, if you may. The second aspect, as just mentioned, is the length. How many words can you produce in a continuous string of speech without hesitation or pauses? Yeah. Okay, so this is what we call uh, speaking at length. You want to be able to connect ideas together, as we have mentioned in previous episodes of our podcast. You, you don't want to give short answers. You know, a lot of times people will tell me, oh, well, you know, Javier, if I say, you know, what's your favorite music? And I say rock, that's my answer. I don't I mean, I have to be short because a lot of times people um, preach, you should give short and concrete and concise answers. If you're in a business meeting, maybe. But other than that, if you give me a short answer, that means you don't want to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> you can always go, if you give a long answer, you can always go back to short answers. But if you're used to giving short answers, it's very complicated. Yeah. To be to give you a lengthy you, answer, yeah. and thereby you're limiting yourself in your fluency. Right. That's a very you know uh, uh, adding to that what Javier mentioned so important mm -hmm. is that uh, what you're saying is something comprehensible, all right, and that your ideas are connected correctly. This is where you uh, use uh, correct linkers, connectors, transition words. So what you're saying is something comprehensible for the person who's listening to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it also being fluent is that you're actually being you're you're communicating with somebody. Well, that's that isn't that the isn't that you know why people the are purpose the language <laughs> the purpose of learning a language is being able to communicate effectively or competently with others. Okay, exactly. and that's being being competent, and being able to communicate effectively with effectively with others doesn't necessarily mean fast. It means other. It, it also implies that you're connecting your ideas correctly, you're using your grammar correctly, you're uh, using the uh, appropriate language or voc vocabulary for the appropriate situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So all of these aspects, uh, you know, come with the definition of being fluent. Okay. That's right. And this is mainly for, for our students, you know, for our students and uh, learners out there. Fluency is not speaking very fast because you can speak very fast with minimal grammar or minimal you know uh, uh complex grammar and you can say just 10 words very fast but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're fluent mm -hmm. okay fluency means speaking competently now that yeah, includes maybe. that includes guys variety in your language you know right. if, if every other word that you say is like so uh, we were we we're going we're talking about this and like and la, 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 and like and la, 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 like that's yeah, not a crap, that's not <laughs> that's not helping you. That's telling me you don't have your you're sacrificing fluency because of your lack of vocabulary. Correct. You should be able to yes. give me different sorts of vocabulary words, ranges of, of speaking, and not just repeat word and so 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 keep saying so and so all the time. Oh, okay, you might you might be able to speak faster, but yeah. you're not transmitting, you're not being coherent coherent yeah I've, i i learned this i learned this tip i just uh -huh. wanna, wanna add to this if you're making the other the others frown while you're speaking <laughs> that means that you're getting them confused <laughs> so he's not getting not, it right yeah, he's not getting it right or he's not getting uh -huh. it at all so uh -huh. be mindful of what they're is what you're trying to transmit yeah. a lot of people go yeah. go in one direction and then they go in a different direction and like, what are you trying to tell me <laughs> yeah. what are you exactly are you trying yeah, to say when people start doing this like, if like, you're watching the video like yeah. frowning uh, and just looking at you funny yeah you're, okay. you're not conveying the right well message. think of put it this way L little little kids that are two years old maybe they might say a lot of stuff but do you understand everything they said? <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> they can, be, they can really speak really fast. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I don't get yeah, what you're saying. Exactly. 
Yeah. Okay. It, it, and if, okay. if you've asked me, and you know, it's uh, it's it's a question. You know, this this question is that can we improve fluency? Can you improve your fluency? Well, it all harkens back to the, the principle of practice makes progress, right, Javier? Right. Practice yeah, makes. Yeah. Uh, Man, but the correct or you know appropriate practice makes exactly. the, you know appropriate, appropriate. Pra uh, exactly. progress, right? Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like to quote our our uh, wrestling coach when I was in high school. Uh, well, the, the the old adage is practice makes perfect, and our coach used to say, "Nope, practice does not make perfect." And I said, "No, of course, that's what the saying says." He said. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yeah. yeah. If you keep practicing, but you're doing it wrong, you'll never be perfect. So exactly. I'll, I'll add to that, guys. You know, yeah, you need somebody to guide you, coach you, give you some sort of feedback. Unless you're extremely good at you know coaching yourself, you're recording yourself, you're recording videos of yourself, and you can actually notice by watching a lot of other stuff. Yes, there are some people that have the gift for that, but if not, Get somebody to help you. Get yeah. get a, get a That's teacher. Right. No, yeah, right. it, it's it's not it's not you know it doesn't happen overnight. No. Don't expect that with you know three uh, lessons of I'm going to have three lessons three of months. fluency. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a special <laughs> lesson for fluency with three lessons. I got it. No, no. it's <laughs> not, not going to happen have... overnight. No. It, it does take time, like you know any other skill. It'll take <clears> its time, <throat> but like mentioned, like Katza and Javier mentioned, you do need to put in the time. Yep. And you need to have, you know, a professional guiding you. Guiding you. Perfect not a practice. coach. No. Not a coach. There are many no. coaches out there right now. Uh -huh. I got the secret key for your perfect fluency, your perfect life. Mm -hmm. Those, you know, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that, you know, to them. Look yeah. for professionals who actually know what they're doing. And they'll, and, you know, and you'll find, you know, what you're looking for. If you want fluency, if you want exactly. to improve your English, find a professional. Okay. Right. So that's right. Quick, you can quick do. question, George. How long have you been teaching? I've been teaching for over 30 years. That's a professional right there, guys. <laughs> That's a professional. Yeah, 30 years. That, he knows what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah. yeah and, and you know what? It, what it, 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 it all depends, Javier. It uh -huh. all depends. I've known teachers that have started 30, that started 30 years ago, but they're doing this exact same thing they oh, did 30 yeah, you're years right. ago. Yes. So repeating the same thing over and over for 30 years doesn't necessarily That's make you better. Practice. There it's you a go. Thing. Yes, the practice, but also improving on yourself and of finding course. new techniques and and yeah. always you know reading and finding Debating. new methodologies that and i think that's in any field oh that's true sure. i mean we call that sure. do we have a name for that right george it's called a teacher technician that means mm -hmm. the person that that's taught the same method or the same book for 30 years and yeah, yeah that's yeah. not Boring. exactly it <laughs> <Boring>. <laughs> okay and the last point right, guys the last, the last point, point is mm -hmm. effectiveness which means is the listener able to fully understand without any effort here the key word is how much do i have to struggle to understand you if you're going too slow i'll struggle if you don't under, if you know, don't know what i mean watch the president talk in the morning it's, it's <laughs> mm, <laughs> which president <laughs> we're both both are just about which the same one? oh that's right you you are right you're absolutely right both presidents are so slow it's like oh come on yeah. get to the well, point yeah. And guys, yeah, when it, we say both, we mean we mean Mexico and, and, US and also the American and president. American, okay. Yeah. Please don't bomb us, buddy. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody's going too slow. It's irritating. Okay. It's just I know mean, you're you're trying to look for the right words. You're like trying to look for the right grammar. It doesn't work that way. Okay. No, but if you're going too fast, I you know, uh, no, it doesn't work with me either because I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to say. If right. you don't have a specific skill of Going from general to specific, as we have sp spoken in several other podcasts, then I don't know which way you're going. So I'll struggle to understand you. And if I have to struggle, then you are not fluent. Exactly. Exactly. Simple as that. All right. To sum up, fluent is not fast. Uh -huh. Okay. In fluency, we measure speed, length, coherence, and effectiveness. We are actually going to break this podcast down to more episodes about this to give you more tips and hacks and ideas how to improve your fluency. Also, there's another one that we haven't mentioned yet. Mm -hmm. When we include wow. the social aspect too, it becomes clear that fluency is a, com is a complex con concept. Why am I saying this? Because 
there might be people who really don't understand you because of their their uh -huh. physical uh, or psychological uh, capabilities. Right. Or maybe they are too. yes maybe they are handicapped in some way and then you will need to to communicate in a different way mm -hmm. and this is social sensitivity right yeah, exactly. this is included in fluency actually this is included in how you address these kind of people all right there's Let's also like accent, accent management guys you've heard it before if you ever spoken to somebody from india they try to be very fluent, but they're going too fast usually. Yeah. So raise your hand if you have and trouble they the listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> Click yeah. on my computer, okay? With all my respects to the all the respect, media, yeah. all the respect. But uh -huh. so, yeah. most most of you have a great, you know, great uh, English skills. You yes, know, of mm. course. Some of you, like in any other country, you uh -huh. it's hard to under to understand. Yeah. You know, to understand because you're. You know, hard, hard accent. It's it's a hard accent. accent. You have to adapt accent. to it. You have to adapt, yeah. but you have to make you got to follow what we actually mentioned as rules right now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's still part of the game. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right. Very good. Let's wrap things up, guys. Yep. Okay. So anything else you would like to say? Yeah. 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 Javier? Yes. Okay. Perfect, so listen. Perfect uh, what? Perfect. Per perfect practice makes perfect. That's exactly. it. Exactly. You can't, uh, it's it's just this, you will never, ever achieve your goals. Uh -huh. You're not willing to put in the time and sacrifice. You need somebody you to just, help you. Yeah, if you just say you want to do it, but you don't put in the action, the massive action, mm -hmm. it's just going to stay in a dream. Okay. If you're really serious about learning something or, or achieving something, time, 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 yeah. practice, 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 sacrifice, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. but it will be worth it. It'll totally, be worth it. Totally, totally. Worth it. especially yes. with with uh, with us as experts, we can help you. you know, I hope we can help you. <laughs> yes. All right. So listen, uh, tip. I know people that buy a punching bag and buy some gloves and think they can learn to box on their own. And they, and I watch them and they're doing everything wrong because nobody has coached them. It's yeah. a good start, guys. A good start. Get some gloves, get some punching bag, but go to a boxing gym. Mm -hmm. You need an expert to guide you or you're going to hurt your hands. Trust mm -hmm. me. And you're yeah. going to learn it wrong, which is worse. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be a waste of your money and time. English is the same thing. Yes, yep. go if to you, the expert. If you keep practicing, but you're doing it wrong, then it's going to be really hard to correct you later on. And yeah. we get that oh, yeah. all the time. It's not perfect practice. It's bad practice. Which is worse. It is. <laughs> Which is worse. <laughs> Which is exactly. worse. You worse, then, not better. Then you then we go back to the first example of advanced learners make errors that advanced learners make. <laughs> yeah. That's what what do you think we're getting from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then they become uh fossilized. Fossilized. Oh, yeah. Once fossilized yeah. one means you the mistake is so embedded, it's really hard to get out of there. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. so look out for that. Yeah. Okay, this is it for today. Thank you to all of our audience out there. And remember to subscribe to our channel. If you like this podcast, please share it with all your friends. You should check out our YouTube channel where you can get the video version of this podcast. And of course, you are more than welcome to comment on our videos. You can also visit our website where you will find articles about English practice and learning. All right, until next time. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.